And these are some uh, decay curves of what uh, the difference in the disappearance of LDL from the blood in diabetes. So if you've got, um, you know, severe diabetes, it takes even longer to disappear. If you're healthy, it disappears quickly. If you've got in inherited hypercholesterolemia, where you've got no receptors, well, guess what? The LDL hangs around a long, long time in the blood and it becomes small and dense. So even in familial hypercholesterolemia, it's a particular disease, it's a high LDL disease, but it's a small, dense LDL disease because the LDL's been hanging around in the blood so long, it's small and dense. That's what makes it so atherogenic. And the last, sorry, the last one was uh, CKD in, in, in uh, kidney disease, the, largely because they're insulin resistant, it takes a long time to clear LDL they have small, dense LDL, and that's what causes cardiovascular disease, so high rate in, in renal uh, patients. Now, I mentioned this CETP protein, and there was, uh, there was um, in a way, CETP was cause, helping to cause small, dense LDL by uh, allowing that exchange of triglycerides with LDL and HDL and so on. So people have developed um, these CTP inhibitors to try to increase HDL so they didn't disappear. They were focused on increasing HDL. And the studies have been really disappointing because even though they may have increased HDL, they haven't really improved cardiovascular outcomes. And in fact, sometimes they've worsened things. And so, so in a way, this didn't fit the theory because I'm telling you that it, it's, it is an important player. Recently, people have discussed that uh, the way that uh, CETP does the transfer is two different mechanisms. One is sort of trans, uh, trans, um, a diffusion and one's a sort of a flip-flop mechanism. And the drugs have different effects on the different mechanisms. And so even with the CETP inhibitors, they vary in whether they increase HDL or they impact LDL like making it less small and dense, or both. And so now there's a new class of CTP inhibitors where they're trying to differentiate the, the impact on HDL and the impact of, of LDL. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to promote CTP inhibitors. I'm just saying that one of the best things I like about drug studies is they tell us so much about physiology and help us understand what health is all about. So what I've just told you about fatty liver and small dense LDL and oxidase, that, that's in a, a review in Atherosclerosis 2024. So it is taken as gospel by cardiologists and so on, this whole idea of fat um, and small dense LDL and oxidized LDL being the cause. That's how the modern cardiologist thinks. And uh, in these older studies, the RX studies, when they, you look at the different types of LDL, if you've got the large buoyant LDL, the stuff that's made quickly, returns to the liver quickly, there's no difference in cardiovascular risk, no matter what your LDL level is. But if you've got that small dense LDL, it's a huge difference in what your cardiovascular risk is. So I often say um, anybody who's thinking cholesterol is 30 years out of date. Anyone who's thinking they're really clever by LDL, which is bad cholesterol, is only 20 years out of date. Anybody who's understanding small dense LDL, well, is at least within 10 years of date. And anybody who's questioning what is it about small dense LDL that's so atherogenic is up to date. And now we can measure small LTL. We, um, there are labs in Australia that can measure it. We do this by electrophoresis and you can separate it out. And I think some of you would have had seen these tests. So the top one has got LDL 1 and 2, which are large and buoyant. The bottom ones have got LDL 1, 2, 3 and 4. The higher the number, the more small and dense it is. And that's the bad pattern. And, and there's other things in that. You can see that their VLDL is high because that's where the triglycerides are. And you can also see that their HDL is low. So the whole pattern is not just one thing that tells you that there's insulin resistance. It's the whole pattern that's telling you 
uh, what's happening for this patient. 